We will start with an Arex curved nymph hook in size 10 and a 3.3mm rainbow tungsten bead. I then crimped the barb down and fastened the hook to the vise. I use UTC 140 in red and start a thread dam behind the bead until it stops rotating. Then finish the thread by the barb of the hook. Next, take a piece of gold tinsel and securely tie it up the shank, making sure to leave the thread at the back of the bar. The chamois here is from Germany. They really do make great stuff. I cut a manageable piece, then I cut it into smaller strips. I go for just less than eighth of an inch wide, but two inches long. I measure around a hook in length and tie it in making sure that the chamois is on top of the hook. Secure it with a few firm wraps. Leave the excess to hang in the back and we will cut everything to length at the final step. Bring your tying thread to the back of the bead and then take the gold tinsel and make slight overlapping wraps forwards. Tie it off behind the bead with a couple firm wraps and then cut off the excess. Then bring the chamois forward making sure it rests on top of the shank. Cinch it down with a few firm thread wraps then one in front of the chamois but behind the thread. Finally do a 3-5 to five turn whip finish and trim the chamois about a hook in length at the front. This fly really has a lot of motion in the water and will catch just about any fish in the river. Elastic bands are great for fly tying and I prefer the light tan colored ones. Snip the elastic with a pair of scissors. I start with an Arex curved nymph hook in size 10. Crimp the barb down and place the hook in the vise. Once again, UTC 140 in red is the thread of choice. We start the thread about an eye length behind the eye and wrap into the bend of the hook. Then finish your thread at the initial tying point. Next, we tie in the elastic band, making sure to keep it on top of the shank. Tie it all the way to the bend of the hook with open, firm wraps. Once again, we bring the thread to the initial tying point behind the eye. Then, take the elastic band and begin to make slight overlapping wraps forwards. You can add a taper whilst doing this, but it's not really that necessary. Tie it off just behind the eye of the hook and cut off the excess. Then, do a 3-5 to five turn whip finish and cut your thread. For added durability and for additional shine, I add a light coat of Sally Hansen's Hard as Nails. Spread it with a bodkin and allow it to fully dry before using. This fly works all season long and for a multitude of species. It's great for drop shotting too. If you have kids, you have earplugs. We start this off with a B10S in size 6. Cut the earplug in half, then feed it through the hook slowly. Wiggling the earplug back and forth and using a lot of pressure is needed to puncture completely through. Then secure the hook in your vise and push the earplug rearwards. Again, we use UTC 140 in red. Begin your thread behind the hook eye and bring it rearward to about half the shank. Do a quick whip finish, then add a drop of super glue over the thread wraps. Slide the earplug forward with a twisting motion and allow the glue to dry. Next, we start the thread behind the earplug and finish just past the point of the hook. A 2 inch piece of 6 to 8 strands of crystal flash is used for the tail. I then tie it by the hook point with a few firm wraps. Then I take the excess and fold it over and tie it down with a few more thread wraps. Finally, I trim it to about the hook shank in length. For more flash and splash, I use some loosened chenille in size small. Clean the material to expose the base thread. Then tie it in front of the tail with a few firm wraps. Then we use some silly legs. I have them in orange speckled here. One leg will be plenty. I then bend it in half and tie it behind the earplug at its midpoint, making sure to keep the legs separated slightly. 
Hummer the chenille forward and try your best not to capture all the silly legs while doing so. Once at the back legs, go between the legs and push them rearward. Continue pommering forward with a few more turns while pulling the front legs forward. Finally, secure the chenille with a few thread wraps and cut it off. Do a 3 to 5 turn whip finish and cut your thread. Trim the legs to your liking. An inch or so is perfect for this popper. This pattern catches small mouth and large mouth very well. I hope you enjoyed these patterns and give them a try. Thank you so much for watching.